Everybody praise the Lord. Wonderful to be in Endogo again. And then this time, from Enugu to Nigeria, to Africa, to America, to Asia, to Europe, to Canada, to Australia, everywhere in the world, we are now concentrating on Enugu Global Crusade. I welcome everyone in Jesus' name. God will make a way for you. He will send this word to you tonight. He will heal your body. He will save your soul. He will turn your life, your family, turn everything around in Jesus' name. Anywhere you are, online, any country, any continent, any church location, by yourself, in your own bedroom, in your own sitting room, or with your family, with anyone, or you are by yourself alone, God is about to work in your life. He will turn your life around. He will show you mercy. It will reveal grace unto you. It will shut out the powers of the enemy. Your sickness, whatever the name, will be healed in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come tonight on the basis of your love of your mercy, of your compassion, of your power that cannot fail, and your goodness available unto everyone. Lord, you send your word tonight, you send your power tonight, and you open the windows and the doors of heaven, and you touch everyone in Jesus' name. A saving touch, a miracle working touch, a healing touch, a supernatural touch, a personal touch for everyone. Be glorified tonight, be exalted tonight, and let your power flow everywhere to everyone in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. I always enjoy Enugu. Amen. Today, as we begin the crusade or the revival or the meeting, whatever you like to call it, as we begin today about the divine torch for total freedom, not partial freedom, total, complete, all round, inside, outside, on your soul, on your body, on your spirit, in your family, total torch, divine torch for total freedom. Congrats, you are free. Tonight, I'm going to read to you from Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading verses 1, 2, and 3. And we're looking at supernatural cure and cleansing through the divine torch. Divine torch that will bring supernatural cure. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 1. When he, Christ, was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Look at verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. 
saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And then in verse 3, it says, and Jesus, somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. The name that saves, the name that brings forgiveness, the name that brings heavenly power, the name that heals your sickness, and he has not changed Jesus Christ the same. Today, yesterday, today, and forever. And everything he did before in Bible days, he'll do in your life tonight. And Jesus put forth a son and touched him. That's the divine touch we're talking about. And touched him. That's the supernatural touch we're talking about. And touch him. That is the heavenly touch, a saving touch, a healing touch, a miracle working touch. We're talking about. And it touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately, immediately, immediately. When is your miracle? When is your salvation? When is your deliverance? Immediately his leprosy was placed. Come back to verse 1. In verse 1, when he cries was come down from the mountain. He came from heaven. He came to the earth. And he's coming to you today. He came and down. We're down here on earth. And then up from heaven. The high mountain. The holy hill. The very presence of God. The day came when God to show his love. And to show his mercy. And to show his compassion on you. He came down from high heaven and when he came down he went everywhere was seen Jerusalem was seen Capernaum was seen Nazareth was seen everywhere and you see today in your presence right there and great multitudes followed him if you are making up your mind and you say I'm going to follow he came for me he came to save me he came to heal me. He came to deliver me. And then, as he has come, it's looking for a response from you. And you will not let the multitudes beat you to it. The great multitude followed him. You are going to follow him tonight. And as you stand up, as you make up your mind, as you take a decision, I will follow. You cannot follow him in vain. Something he brought from the mountain top, something he brought from heaven, must come upon your life today. Now, look at that verse 2 again. It says in verse 1 Behold, somebody singled out himself. He said, Yes, I know the multitudes are following, but I, in particular, there came a leper. Now you need to understand, a leper was a defiled person. A leper was an outcast. A leper was an incurable man or incurable woman. A leper did not have an earthly solution to the leprosy medical solution to the, to the leprosy. He brought a problem that the world had no solution for. Maybe you are there tonight and you have a problem that the world, that science, that medical science, that education, that philosophy, that the people of the world, the experts of the world, they do not have a solution for. Tonight, you have come to the final bus stop. Solution today. 
healing today, deliverance today, salvation today. There came a leper and worshipped him. You know, many people hear about meetings like this, and they say, I'll go there, and you have come. But you know, the leper did something. He worshipped him. He accepted him. You don't worship a doctor. You don't worship a teacher. You don't worship a politician. You don't worship a man of, of the world. You don't worship anyone that is born like you, like me. He worshipped him. He recognized this is the son of God. He recognized this is the very one sent by the heavenly father. He worshipped him. The honor, the worship, the adoration they should give to God in heaven. He worshipped him. He said, religion apart. He said, all my practices and the works of my hand apart. He bent down and he worshipped him. If you will come today, like he came, and you worship in all sincerity, and you worship from the depth of your heart, and you forget religion, and you forget your works, and you forget totality, and you worship him, and then saying, Lord, he wanted Christ to be the head, the master, the controller of his life, he said, Lord, you know, when you come to the Lord, there are many people that just come, they said, I like crusade. I like conference. I've been there before. I'm going there again. You own him as your Lord, as your master, as your savior, as the controller of your life. And you surrender your soul, your spirit, your past, your presence, your future, your surrender, everything to the Lord. And you say, from now on, self will not control me. The world will not control me. Priest or prophet will not control me. I yield the totality of my life unto Christ I accept him, I make him my Lord. Something will happen in your life. He came, you must come. He worshiped, you must worship. Bend down, bend low, surrender yourself completely unto him. And then he called him Lord. Now he said, if the wills, he said, if you will, if you want, he said, all I want now is the will of my Lord. If you come to that situation today and you say, not my will, his will, not my way, his way, not my decision, his decision. And you say, I come today. If thou wilt, as thou wilt, because you will, I surrender my will unto you. And I make you the final will and the final authority in my life. If thou wilt, thou, not thou and my religion, not thou and my works, not thou and whatever I pay in the temple, thou canst make me clean. Me, I don't know what others want. Me, I don't know what others desire. Me, you can make me clean. If you become personal like that tonight, he'll make you clean. He'll touch your life. He'll turn your life around. And then in verse 3, and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. 
Somebody there is getting a divine touch tonight. Somebody there is getting a heavenly touch tonight. When he touches your spirit, transformation will come. When he touches your soul, encouragement will come to those who are depressed. I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I will die. When he touches your soul, death will flee away. Discouragement will flee away. Life will come to you in Jesus' name. And when it touches your body, it will touch your body. What are you? I said it will touch your body. If you believe that, say amen. When it touches your body, the Christ, our healer, the Christ, our great physician, the Christ, the power of God in man. When he touches your body, the Christ, the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And right there where you are, if you are in the congregation here, if you are in another congregation, any country where you are listening, if you are by yourself and you are connected and you pay total attention, you are not jumping off and going to the kitchen, going somewhere, I'm taking this, I'm taking that. If you come like this man came with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, it's going to touch you tonight. That negative medical report in your life tonight, it will change. Blind eyes will open. That lame will rise up and walk. Power from heaven will come upon you even tonight in Jesus' name. And immediately, not another night, immediately, instantaneously at this very hour immediately his leprosy was cleansed i didn't hear your amen supernatural cure and cleansing through the divine touch we're looking at three things before we pray number one compassion for the despised and the downtrodden. The leper was a, de a despised man. And yet Christ had compassion. Maybe because of who you are. You are an outcast. Because of who you are. You are rejected. Maybe your family has rejected you. They say they don't want to identify with you. Because of your life. Because of your records. Tonight, what Papa cannot do, what Mama cannot do, the Lord will do for you. All that rejection will be cancelled. You'll not be despised anymore. Heaven will rejoice because of you. Compassion for the despised and the downtrodden. Number two, cleansing. Cleansing is coming your way. There's salvation in cleansing. There's transformation in cleansing. There's a new life in cleansing. And there is regeneration. And God will take you up. Your personality. He will reform you. He will recreate you. He will regenerate you. Today, cleansing for you. Being a dirty person, dirty language, dirty lifestyle, a dirty gang, pornography, and all that spoiling your life today. He will cleanse your soul and cleanse your spirit. You will be clean through and through tonight in Jesus' name. But remember, you must do as the man did. He came, you must come. He worshiped, you must worship. 
He called him Lord. You call him Lord. And then you tell him, only your will do I desire, if thou wilt. And when you desire that will, the will of God, which is your salvation, your conversion, your transformation, your regeneration, that conversion tonight is your night in Jesus' name. Number three now, kill complete. Kill complete. Anybody there? I say kill complete. When we say kill complete for that man, for that leper, one hundred percent kill. No percentage of sickness remaining. No parts of sickness or disease remaining. God can. Jesus can. Holy Spirit can. And if you stretch forth your hand to receive tonight, that possibility will come into your life. Heal, complete by the divine touch. Kill complete. Kill 100% by the divine touch. Let's come to number one. Number one is compassion for the despised and the downtrodden. This same story we find in Mark chapter one. Let me read Mark to you and see the version there. Mark chapter one, verse 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, pleading with him, asking him, and kneeling down to him. He didn't say, I'm angry at God. I don't know why this has happened. When we of all people, I had great vision, had great prospect. Look at me now. I'm a leper now. They will not accept me in any school, any institution. Nobody wants to marry a leprous man. Why has God done this? No, he didn't say that. There are some people, they say, they're coming to God, and they say they're praying. And their prayer is all complaints, and it's all accusation. It's all criticism. But the man beseeching him, kneeling down to him, and saying, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Verse 41. In verse 41, it says, and Jesus was moved with compassion. For you tonight, the Lord will move with compassion. He knows your condition. He knows your sorrow. He knows your sickness. He knows your predicament. He knows what you are going through. He knows the tears you shed. He knows the suffering you are going through. And with the heart of a compassionate Savior, He looks at you tonight. He said, I cry with you. I suffer with you. I'm your substitute. And in compassion, I will take your sin. I will take your sorrow. I will take your sickness. Tonight has brought solution to your problem. And Jesus moved with compassion. Put his hand, put forth his hand and touched him. Divine touch. And touched him, heavenly touch, and touched him, healing touch, and he touched him, a compassionate touch, and it's for you today. I said, it is for you today. And he says unto him, I will, those two words, I will. And he has not changed those words since he brought out the word 
for the leper, for everyone he has compassion. And tonight he tells you, and he tells everyone around you, I have compassion on you, and he touches you, and he says, I will be thou clean. Be thou healed. Be thou saved. Be thou forgiven. Let's see, that compassion of the Lord is still available. In Psalm 145, if you have a Bible, if not, I read it to you. Psalm 145, verse 8 and verse 9. The Lord is gracious. Present tense. The Lord, everybody tell me. Tell me out aloud. Right there, your room, anywhere you are. The Lord is gracious, full of compassion. His compassion is as deep as the ocean, as wide as the sea, inexhaustible. You can come and take your cup of compassion. She can come and take her cup of compassion of the sympathy of the Lord, of the love of God, of the mercy of God, because the Lord is full of compassion, is slow to anger. You know, somebody says, I think God is angry at me. I've done this, God must be angry. I've gone that way, God must be angry. I've not served him my right, God must be angry. He says, he is slow to anger. And of great mercy. The mercy of the Lord is yours tonight. If you will come, if you will come, if you will come. And that leper came. And he came to the right one. He came to the Savior. That mercy will come to you today. Look at verse 9. The Lord is good to all. My name is there. I said, my name is there. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his words. That's how I know if you will come tonight, it will save your soul. It will take away from you the penalty of sin. It will take away from you the punishment of sin because of his love, because of his mercy, and because of his compassion, because his mercies are over all his works. Satan did not create you, God created you. You believe that? Say yes. And because you are the work of the Lord, His mercy, His compassion, His love will be for you. It will take away the punishment and the penalty of your sin. It will break the power of sin from your life. And then it will neutralize the pool of sin. The sin that's always pulling you down, pulling you down, pulling you down. The Lord will weaken that pool even tonight. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. Your desire to get to heaven, the Lord will fulfill. Your desire to be free, free from sin. Free from sickness and free from the power of Satan. The Lord will fulfill that desire tonight in Jesus' name. Look at this. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Tonight is your night. If you come, if you worship, if you call him Lord, Surrender your life unto him, and then his hand will touch you. Micah chapter, nine, chapter 7, verse 19. Micah chapter 7, verse 19. He will turn again. 
he will have compassion upon us. Tonight, he will have compassion upon us. Tonight, I say tonight, say yes. He will. He cannot fail. His power cannot fail. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. That amen is too weak. You know, I always recognize a no go amen anytime I hear no go amen. Compassion. Compassion. Compassion coming upon your life tonight. All the sins that tied you down, all the sins that defiled your life, all the sins that make you to be despised, despised of heaven. And the spies of earth and the spies of religion and the spies of the people that are close to you tonight, the Lord will take all those things, He will put them in the depths of the sea in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 15, verse 18. The man said, I will arise and go to my father. The father is always there. And he's full of love. He's full of compassion. He's full of mercy. But you must take the step. I will arise and go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Look at verse 19. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. The sinner is not worthy to be called the son of God. The fornicator is not worthy. The adulterer is not worthy. The gambler is not worthy. The thief is not worthy. The violent fighting man or woman is not worthy. And the one that is going from woman to woman is not worthy. But you know, many people, they come and they say, here I am. I am rich. I am educated. I am this and that. God, are you not lucky? I came to church. Those people never get saved. The people that come, and they realize all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And they know in the sight of God, education does not qualify you. Money does not qualify you. You have gone astray like a prodigal man, a prodigal woman. And you say, I am no more worthy to be called that son. Make me as one of the hired servants. Look at verse 20. And he arose. That's why I told you from the beginning. That leper came. And you must arise. And you must come. It's not enough to say. I will come. He made each an urgent decision. And he acted on each. And he arose. It's not just that I have intention. He had action to back up his repentance. And he arose and came to his father. You are coming tonight. I said you are coming tonight. And as you come, all your sins, he will forgive in Jesus' name. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. The Heavenly Father will see you there tonight. God, our Creator, will see you there tonight. And his father saw him and had compassion, 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 and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He will receive you back home. 
He will receive you back into the kingdom. And when he receives you, it will change your life. Look at verse 21. It says, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Verse 22. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robes. It will change your spiritual garment. It will cleanse your life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. When somebody truly comes to the Lord, and the Lord has compassion on him, that compassion brings conversion. If somebody comes, it was stealing before, after saying, I raised up my mind, he keeps on stealing, he has not got compassion. No conversion, no compassion. If somebody was a gambler, and then he says, I raised up my hand, I came to the Lord, and the gambling continues after raising up the hand. That one does not have a change, a transformation. But when God takes hold of you tonight, and he touches you tonight, gambling will vanish away. Drunkenness will vanish away. Smoking, ordinary smoking, or marijuana, or weed, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. A new life, a new dressing, a new appearance, and a new disposition will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And then he said, bring the best room. Put it on him. I put a ring of acceptance on his hand and shoes on his feet. 23, it says, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry. There is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. You are repenting tonight. You are coming fully wholeheartedly to the Lord tonight in Jesus name and then there will be joy angels in heaven will rejoice because of you tonight in Jesus name in verse 24 but this my son was dead dead I thought it was just in the far country separation from the heavenly father is spiritual death separation from your creator is spiritual death you are dead in sins and trespasses if you are living in sin but new life will come eternal life will come heavenly life will come to you tonight in jesus name he was dead and is alive. The difference between the sinner and the believer is the difference between death and life. When he was a sinner, prodigal son, prodigal daughter, prodigal backslider, eating the food of pigs living like the world he was dead but now coming to the heavenly father and there's a change in his life now he comes alive you will come alive the grace of god will come alive in your personality and the goodness of god will come alive in your personality in jesus name and he was lost and is found. And Jesus said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Tonight, as you come to Christ, 
heaven will find you. Salvation will find you. A new life will find you. And they began to be married. For you tonight, heaven will rejoice. When the grace of God flows into your life, when the love of God flows into your life, because of you, heaven will rejoice tonight. Point number two now is cleansing us through a displayed trust. What does that mean? He had trust in the Lord, but he didn't hide that trust. He didn't keep quiet on that trust. He brought it out. He displayed his trust in the Lord. He came to the Lord openly. He didn't say, when I get home, I don't want anybody to recognize me as a leper. I don't want anybody to recognize me as a sinner. I don't want anybody to recognize me as a backslider in the quiet of my room. When I get back home, when nobody will notice, then I will have faith in God. He displayed his confidence in God, his trust in God. He displayed his faith in God. And cleansing came through that displayed trust. Look at Mark chapter 1 verse 42. In verse 42, if you don't have a Bible, don't mind, I read it to you. And as soon as I have spoken among the crowd, he spoke, he spoke out, he called out, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and it was cleansed. I said it was cleansed. Yeah. And the power of the Lord remains the same today. It will cleanse you. Yeah. He knows that's why Jesus Christ shed his blood. In the cleansing blood, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, that cleansing flow coming from the very throne of God. And it's still cleansing today. And when that cleansing flow touches you tonight, you will be clean. So, spirit and body, you will be clean. Your character, your language, your behavior, your attitude, you'll be cleansed tonight in Jesus' name. You know, just going to church does not cleanse anybody. The people that go to church, they come out, they still have dirty language, you know it. They still have dirty life, you know it. They still have unacceptable, unrighteous living in their lives. Going to church does not solve it. It is when you make up your mind, today I'm taking a personal, definite decision. I'm coming to the Lord. Cleansing will come. And it comes when openly you declare, you display, you exhibit openly your trust in God and he was cleansed. It's your turn. What are you? I said it's your turn. It will cleanse you in Jesus name. Look at Psalm 51. Psalm 51. I'm reading from verse 2. Here is a man he knew God. He knew the power of God. He knew the presence of God. But something happened. In his house. Not in the sanctuary. It was in the sanctuary. It was in the temple. It was what it were called church today. But something happened. One was all alone. And he became defiled. He became sinful. He fell into the works of the flesh 
And now he wanted the compassion of the Lord and the cleansing of the Lord. And again, he displayed his trust in the Lord. He didn't just hide and cover his mouth, let nobody hear this. After he prayed, he wrote it down. He said in Psalm 51 verse 2, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. He didn't say that woman, uh, you know, exposed herself and brought me to it. He didn't blame anybody himself. He came to the Lord. He said, I am the sinner. I'm the one that yielded myself to evil. And he said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me from my sin. Look at verse 3. It says, for I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. And then in verse 4 it says, Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. You know, some people, they say, uh-huh, I do that, but whose business is that? This man did not say that. Yes, I do the works of the flesh, I defile myself. Whose business is that? It's God's business, he created you. It's Christ's business. He died for you. It's your wife's business. It's your husband's business. You're supposed to be together and be clean. It's your parents' business. You're supposed to live a clean life, upright life, and your parents are sad. When you are not living the upright life, it's your pastor's business. The pastor is laboring on you and he expects you that you'll be clean. If you are not, you'll not say and come and say whose business is that. It's other people's business. Whatever you do will affect other people and influence them negatively. And so he said against thee, the only have I seen and done. This evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clean when thou judgest. Then in verse 5, it says, Behold, I, the king, I, the killer of Goliath, I, the exalted one in his family, I was shaped in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Then in verse 6, they say, Thou behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Now in verse 7, it says, Touch me. I need cleansing. Touch me. Pardon me. Forgive my sin. I feel dirty. I feel condemned. I need your salvation. Touch me with Esau and I shall be clean. The hand of the Lord will touch you tonight. You will be clean. I said you will be clean. You know, my friend, my neighbor there, if you are not clean, you are not ready for heaven. No unclean thing will get to heaven. No one that is playing with sin, hypocritically, appearing all right in the public, but in the heart, in the life, in the secret place, is unclean, you'll not be worthy of heaven. And when Christ comes, and Christ can come any moment from now, if you remain unclean, you'll be lost forever. I pray you'll not be lost. That's why you will come as that leper came. You will worship and surrender as that leper worship and surrender. You will call him Lord, the Lord of your life, the master of your soul, the controller of your future life from today. And when you come like that, and you say, if thou wilt, that can make me clean, it will make you clean. Your heart will be clean. Your life will be clean. His grace will come in your life 
and the grace that bringeth salvation will appear unto you and all the defilement everything will vanish away in jesus name he said wash me and i shall be whiter than snow look at verse 10 it says in verse 10 creating me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me and then in verse 12 it says restore unto me the joy of thy salvation when you are saved you have the fruit of the spirit you have love you have joy you have peace you have long suffering you have meekness and loneliness you'll be following after the lord because you are truly saved joy the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit the lord will do it tonight first john chapter one i'm reading from verse seven in first john chapter one verse seven but if we walk in the light the light is coming to you tonight the light of salvation the light of relationship with god and the light of the salvation the regeneration that come from jesus christ who is the light of the world is coming to you tonight if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood the blood the blood the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us somebody say amen cleanseth us cleanseth us from all sin that blood has never lost its power is a blood shed for everyone peter james john matthew and luke paul who was saul he was persecuting the church before and the lord called to him saul saul why persecutest thou me it's hard for you to kick against the priest he looked up and said who art thou lord and he said i am jesus the one who died on the cross who was buried who rose again for your salvation he said lord i surrender what will you have me do his life changed from that very hour the blood of jesus cleansed him what he used to do he wasn't doing anymore where he used to go and the persecution he had for the church of christ he never did that before when that blood cleanses you like it cleansed Saul, and he became poor your life will be different and tonight is that night when uh, that same blood of christ that has not lost its power will come on your soul on your spirit and cleanse you tonight something good from heaven will come your way the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin how will that happen look at verse 9 verse 9 if we confess our sin you're not confessing other people's sin your forefathers sin the pastor's sin the priest's sin the church's sin the nation's sin if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness it will happen tonight what are you it's coming your way it's going to happen to you tonight in jesus name
If you come with a sincere heart, if you come leaving all your sins behind, and you come sincerely, wholeheartedly, without hypocrisy, and you come to the Savior, and you surrender, and you worship Him like that leper worship Him, and you call Him Lord, and you turn the Lordship, the control of your life unto the Lord. It will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. And then uh, there's going to be cure for you. Healing for you. What's the person I'm talking about there? Healing. Cure. Cure complete by the divine touch. Anyone Christ touch, if there's any sickness there, Whatever the name of the sickness, that sickness will vanish away. Cancer will vanish away. Kidney disease will vanish away. Pandemic will vanish away. Incurable leprosy will vanish away in Jesus' name. Deadly killer disease will vanish away from you and your blind eyes of course will open any demonic attack and demonic affliction everything will vanish away kill complete complete kill by the divine touch are you ready i said are you ready Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. You have to tell the Lord. Like the leper came and he told the Lord, I need cleansing. I need the removal of this leprosy. You have to pray like that to you. Heal me, O Lord. And I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. You see the double prayer. One, save me. No pretense, save me. No covering up, save me. No hiding, save me. No hypocrisy, save me. And then he says, I shall be saved. You'll be saved tonight. You will be saved tonight. And then heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Healing has come tonight. As the word of God comes to you, the saint is word. And healed them. And there was no one feeble person among all their tribes. Tonight, the sickness is taken away. Your disease is taken away. Because God still answers prayer today. Anywhere you are, that divine touch will come upon your life. Complete cure, 100% cure, with no trace of that infirmity remaining will come upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. Amen. Maybe you were strong before, but now you are weak. You were healthy before, but now you don't know what has happened. Sickness here, in the tummy, in the leg, in the brain, something walking about. I will restore health unto thee. Restoration. Recovery. Regeneration. A new strength. A new health. Coming upon you tonight in Jesus' name. 
and I will heal thee of thy wounds. Says the Lord, I will heal thee of thy wounds. It's coming today. Jeremiah chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 3, 33. We're looking at verse 3. Look at what it says in verse 3. Call unto me. That leper came and called unto him. He worshipped him. He called him Lord. He surrendered the control of his life unto the Lord. And the Lord is saying not only for that leper, but for you. Call unto me and I will answer thee. He's talking to you personally tonight. He said, when you call, it will answer. You want salvation, it will answer. You want healing, it will answer. You want deliverance, it will answer. You want a holy life, it will answer. You want an upright life, it will answer. You want a change of life, it will answer. You want a life that will help you to get to heaven when he comes it will give you that new heavenly light tonight in jesus name call unto me and i will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not the kind of miracle you have never seen you have never heard of will happen in your life look at verse 6 in verse 6 behold i will bring each health and kill the messenger is coming from heaven right now the messenger is on his way right now and the lord is coming to you right now is bringing salvation are you going to receive is bringing healing are you going to receive is bringing transformation of life are you going to receive i will bring each health and kill and i will kill them 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 and all those online you are listening if you come with your heart you come with your mind you leave everything you are not doing this in the kitchen doing this or you know on the side and you come with all your heart and you give yourself to him and you say i'll worship him he'll be my lord he'll be my king he'll be my savior and then you call him lord and surrender the control of your life unto him the promise is i will save them i will kill them i will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth somebody says i'm saved but he doesn't have peace in the heart that's not salvation somebody says i'm converted and he doesn't have peace of heart that's not conversion somebody says i'm a child of god he does not have peace with his wife does not have peace with the husband that's not salvation somebody says i connected with the lord i'm a child of god now and there is no peace there's no peace there's no peace when christ comes christ is the author of peace and the prince of peace and when you come and you connect with the lord the peace of god will reign in your heart from tonight in jesus name you're not be going about that one is my enemy that one is my opposer that one is my detractor that's one is the one doing this and that. I hate him. I cannot go along with him. When you come to the Lord, all your sins are forgiven. And then there's reconciliation with God and reconciliation with any other person around you. And it grants you the abundance of peace and truth. It saves you from error. 
He saves you from falsehood. And he saves you from all those things you do in the night with an occult chick gang. And he gives you peace and truth. And tonight can be your night. What is the person I'm talking to there tonight can be your night. As with all your heart, with all your mind, in all sincerity, you come to the Lord tonight. He will forgive you. He will break all the shackles of sin out of your life in Jesus' name. He will take the punishment of sin away. He will take the penalty of sin away. He will break the power of sin out of your life. And then the sin that used to pull you and pull you and pull you down, it will weaken that pull. And from tonight, Salvation comes and eternal life comes to you in Jesus' name. Yeah. And so come like he came. You worship like he worshiped. You call him Lord, Master, like you call him Lord. And then you say, Now I'm totally surrendered to your will. Take my hand and hold me. And then he'll be taking you step after step, and eventually he will lead you to heaven. Anybody there? He'll hold your hand, he will lead you to heaven. I said, anybody there? He will hold your hand. If you give your heart to him, if you give your heart to him, if you give your will to him, he will hold that hand. Pull you out of sin, bring you to salvation, and you'll be on your way to heaven. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You've seen the story. The story of the leper who led the multitude of the crowd and he made up his mind. Today, I go to Jesus. And he came, and he opened his mouth. He made a public demand, a public confession. He says, if you are ashamed of me in this sinful and adulterous generation, I'll be ashamed of you. When I come in the presence of my father and of his holy angels, but... If you will not be ashamed, as you are here, and in all the other locations, anywhere you are, and you are there online, in your room, in a hotel room, in your garden, anywhere you are seated with your family or by yourself, and you are listening now, and you want to surrender and give your life unto the Lord. This is a sacred moment. As you come, the Lord will receive you. I didn't hear my Enugu amen again. As eggs about, eyes are closed, and this is between you and the Lord. You're saying, Yes, I come. I want salvation. Yes, I come. I want forgiveness. Yes, I come. I want cleansing from my sin. Yes, I come. I want the divine touch. And I want him to make me a new creature in Christ. Anywhere you are, raise up that hand. You want to come? Like that leper came. The sinner. You want his salvation? You want his forgiveness? You want reconciliation with God? You want him to take the guilt and the condemnation of sin away from your life? Anywhere you are, raise up that hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. Anywhere you are now, this is the urgent, important business of the day for you. Raise up your hand there. If you are raising up your hand, you stand up wherever you are. 
They are coming to Christ. God bless you. With your heart, with your mind, with your soul, God bless you there. Sincerely, wholeheartedly, all evil left behind, all sin partners left behind, the multitudes left behind, you're saying, I want to get to heaven. And without salvation, you cannot. I want to be a member of the family of God. Without salvation, you cannot be. Stand up wherever you are and say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. With all my heart, with all my soul, I turn away from my sin. And I turn to Jesus, my Savior. The Lord is waiting for you. You may never be as close as this to salvation any other time in your life. And this is the time you must not miss. The Spirit of the Lord is pulling that tug in your heart. Christ is knocking at the door of your heart. Don't keep him waiting there. That's right. Stand up now. As you stand up, tell the Lord. You see how that leopard did? He worshipped him. You are now my God. You are my Savior. You are my Redeemer. You died for me on the cross of Calvary. Tell him that. And I believe as I come to you now, your compassion will never fail. And I come wanting your compassion upon my life. He knows your secret sin. He knows that thing will drag you down to the pit of hell. But he wants to forgive you now. That's right. Get up there and say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. He has compassion. He'll forgive you now. If you genuinely repent and you display your trust, your confidence, your hope, your faith in him. Thank you, Lord. Forgive me and grant me the grace. Not to go back to those sins anymore. As he forgives you, the spirit of God will bear witness in your heart. There will be peace in your heart. There will be joy in your soul. There will be a new strength in your life. To so now follow the Lord till the end of your life. He will take hold of your hand now. And then... You'll be going the direction of heaven. You'll be following until you get to heaven. Can you say amen while you're standing up? I said, you're, if you're standing up, can you say amen? Raise up that hand as you're standing up. Close your eyes. Christ never rejects anyone who comes. Father, we thank you for your spirit that has spoken to every heart. Thank you for the call, call to salvation, call to forgiveness, call to repentance. Thank you, Lord, because your compassion will not fail. I pray for all these who are standing and all those who are standing everywhere in every congregation all over the world. Those who are by themselves, those who are before the screen, those who are before the telephone, and those who are connected now, and they want the mercy, they want the compassion, they want the salvation of the Lord, give them the assurance of salvation in Jesus' name. Break the power of sin from their lives. Weaken the pool of temptation and sin from their lives in Jesus' name. Let your spirit bear witness in their hearts that they are now children of God. Let heaven rejoice because of everyone. Let the joy bells ring in every heart too. 
We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anywhere you are now, keep on standing. You here and they there, everywhere, all over the world. Join Enugu and give an Enugu. Amen. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our ushers, counselors, members of the choir, they are coming to you now to give you a sleep. You need to keep on standing until you receive. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Keep on standing. And then we will, you know, give you the sleep and you'll feel it. We'll call on our state overseer and all our leaders in the various congregations, anywhere you are, you turn in, uh, you know, you, you lead now in this uh, counseling period. And those who are online, you see a number there on your screen. Get in touch with us through that number. A new journey has begun in your life today. Our Basia here. Keep on standing. Cancer us get to them quickly. Outside, inside, get the card and fill it correctly. Fill in your phone number, make sure it's complete. After that, you return to the ushers or the counselors, and they're going to give you a convert packet. And then you go through all that is there. There is a letter from the man of God to you. Wherever you are, please keep on standing until you are attended to. Don't sit down. And those who are online, Fill in the card provided photo, the link that is there, complete the form and submit through the same link. Or you listen to us and you have made the decision over the late deal. Just take down the address, Deeper Life Bible Church, nearest to you, and identify and show that. Yes, I surrender my life to Christ through the divine torch for total freedom crusade over the lady. Open your, I mean, make sure you feel the card correctly. Counselors, please get to them in all the halls and outside toward the gate all over. Let there be nobody standing that is not being attended to. You gave your life to Christ and they have not attended to you. Please call the attention of the counselor. Please keep standing so that they will identify you and be able to attend to you. The card will be given to you or they help you to feel it. Feel it correctly. All that is needed, give us your correct address and telephone number. Make sure it's up to 11 digits. And then after which, they will give you the Converse letter and the Converse package. Have a lot inside that will help you to grow. And on Sunday 5th of September, there's going to be Believers Converse Banquet. Please, cancel us, get to them quickly. And when you are true, you let us know in all the other locations. Please, this is the canceling time now. We should take all the details of those that gave their lives to the Lord. And those that did it online, either via Facebook or Instagram or any other social media, please fill on the form and submit through the same link. And the Lord will bless you. Make up your mind to continue following the Lord.
Let's be fast, cancerous. And once you are true, you let us know. Outside, we have a lot of people, multitudes outside. Please, if you are feeling from the home where you are, please quickly rush outside to assist the people outside. Get down all the names. Please don't sit down until you are attended to. Hold one, please. Our leaders over there, if you are true kids, can you wave your hand? What of hold two? Please, let's be fast. And everyone you'll be praying, expecting your miracle, because tonight, the Lord has remembered you for good. Cancel us, please. Let's make sure that nobody is missed. Attend to them quickly. And once you are through in your hall, let us know. I still see some few people standing, please. Attend to them very fast. But make sure the forms are correctly filled. And after you have got the decision card back, then you give them the converse package. For one, are we true? What of hall two? Or one is done hall two. You are you are true? Not yet. Please let's be fast. Hall three. Are we done in hall three? Please let's be fast. Hall four. Please, if you are finished from your hall, please quickly go to the halls and help let's be fast and those outside our various unit leaders once they are true outside you come in and indicate please let's be fast and yet let me accurate and let's ensure and when you finish counseling there is no need of going back to your seat stay there so that by the time the miracle takes place you'll be able to bring them out there will be no need why I just where you can say stay there and then all other counselors stay where you can sell when you are true so that you'll be able to assist the people find their way by after they have gotten their miracle because tonight the Lord will touch you. Please let's be fast. Hall true, are you not done yet? Hall two. Hall three, please. Hall two is done. Hall one is done. Hall three, please. Are we done? What of hall four? Hall four is done. That's okay. What of hall five? It's okay. God bless you. Hall six. Are we done? God bless you. Hall seven. Wonderful. What of those outside? Our leaders outside? Are we done? Please let's be fast. Our leaders outside, once you are done, please let us know. Hall three, I mean hall two, please. Can you be fast? I see, see one or two people being attended to. Let's be fast, please. And if you're online, remember, need to fill the form there and submit through the same link. And when you finish counseling, wherever you are, please stay there because as the miracles will be taking place, you'll be bringing them hall, to Hall 7 in the front. Are we done now? God bless you. Let's be on our feet. 
Because it's miracle time. And the Lord will do it. Stand up. As the man of God comes to the pulpit. Praise the Lord. Miracle time. Healing time. Deliverance time. I will receive. I will receive. Can I remind you Matthew chapter 8? I'm looking at verse 3. Matthew chapter 8, it says in verse 3, here is the man that came. Here is the man that worshiped. Here is the man that called him Lord. Matthew chapter 8, verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hand. That hand is coming to you now. And touch him is touching you now. And he said, I will without him. I will. He wills. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Immediately your disease is healed. Immediately your infirmity is gone. We're going to pray now. Any problem you have, as we mentioned, the name of Jesus, that name will bring the touch of God upon your life. Yeah. Blind eyes will open. Yeah. Deaf and dumb, you will hear, you will speak. Yeah. Any swelling, goiter, hunchback, elephantiasis, the touch of Jesus will take it away from you. Cancer, deadly disease, whatever the name, that thing will go away. Yeah. What they have told you cannot be healed, like leprosy could not be healed in the time of this man, but the leprosy was healed, and your disease will be healed. Yeah. When you hear the final amen, then you check up yourself. The healing has come. Yeah. You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand on yourself. Father, in Jesus' name, yeah. we thank you for your compassion that cannot fail, your love that cannot fail, your power that cannot fail, your mercy that cannot fail, and the healing flow and the healing virtue that cannot fail. I bring everyone sick, everyone diseased, everyone having infirmity, everyone having pain, anyone having incurable disease here and over there, anywhere, everywhere connected now. I pray the mighty hand of Christ healing touch come upon you now in Jesus name divine touch on your body heavenly touch on your body healing touch on your body I pray Lord from the top of the head to the chief of the toe let the healing virtue come upon them now heal them in Jesus name Leprosy, vanish away. Skin disease, vanish away. Goiter, vanish away. Blindness, vanish away. Cancer, vanish away. Ulcer, be healed. Elephantiasis, vanish away. Any sickness, insanity, madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, anywhere, everywhere, manifest your power. Give everyone the testimony of their healing. Testimony of their deliverance. Of solution to every problem in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. 
is done over there. Check up yourself. The miracle is right there. Is done. Jam your hand together for Jesus. Is done. Is done. Check yourself. Check yourself. If you're on wheelchair, rise up and walk. Check yourself. Don't check any other person. Check yourself because you are free. Outside, inside, you are free. Check yourself. As you describe your miracle, you come to yourself, praise the Lord, you come to all seven. It's done. It's done. If you're on wheelchair, rise up. If you cannot hear, speak to them now, you will describe they can hear. If you are bright, open your eyes. Stop no movement, stay where you are, check yourself. Yes, it's happening already. It's happening already. Jam your hand together for Jesus. Jam your hand together for Jesus. It's happening. Rise on your feet. Raise your staff and begin to work. You are bright. Yes, keep coming. Keep coming. You describe your miracle. Keep coming to home. Number seven over here. The cancer is gone. The ulcer is gone. You are free. Shout praise the Lord. You got your miracle. Rise up and come to hall number seven. Cancer us get there and begin to interview them. Check yourself. If you are still with your crutches, rise up and begin to work. No movement. Please stay where you are. Check yourself. The power has been released. The prayer has been made. Release yourself. Stand up. Because you are healed. It's happening. Outside, check yourself. Check yourself. I've got you miracle. Shout praise the Lord. Where are you? Come to our number seven. Wonderful. It's happening over there. It's happening over there. It's happening over there. Check yourself where you are. The power has been released. The power has been released. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Where are you? Bring them out. Yes, keep coming. All seven. Cancer us, please. Let's quickly interview them. Wonderful. 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 God is good. Keep coming. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's up. The stick is up. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Just stop. stand on your feet. Because the power has been released. Jump out of your wheelchair. Wonderful. Jam your hand together for Jesus. Wherever you are, check yourself. Were you having an ulcer before? It's no more there. Wonderful. It's happening already. Wherever you are, the miracle power of God is touching you the idea. Outside, keep coming in. Come and share your testimony. Cancer or please help them to come. Wonderful. 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 It's happening where you are. Check yourself. Check yourself. Yes, bring him, bring him, bring him down here. That's it, that's it. Miracle. 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 Check yourself because right where you are, the miracle is taking place already. Wonderful. God is good. Wherever you are, keep checking yourself. Stroke is gone. Arthritis is gone. Attacks is gone. Check yourself and come this way. Come this way. That's another woman over there. 
Jam your hand together for Jesus. From outside, come in. Cancerous priest, bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in. Don't keep yourself down. Your eyes are being opened. Open your eyes, you see everybody clear. And as you describe the miracle, come to hall number seven. Please cancel us, our overseers. Let's quickly interview them so that we can take some of those testimony. And as you are listening to the testimony, you will be receiving your own miracle. Keep checking up. Wonderful. 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 It's happening everywhere. Hold one, check yourself. Don't be a spectator. Hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, and outside. Outside to my right, to my left, at the middle, everywhere, check yourself. The power of God is at work. The power of God is at work. Check up, check up, check up. If you are weak, yeah, rise up. Nothing is tying you down anymore. The power has been released. The shackles have been scattered. Just rise up and keep coming. Come to all number seven. Cancel us, please. Keep bringing them. You are outside. Find your way through to hall seven. Hall seven is one by my left over here. Keep coming. Keep checking up. And I oversee us once you are ready, let me know so I can start taking the testimonies. Wonderful. Examine yourself. Expectation bring the realization already. The power of God has been released. Online, in all the locations, the power has been released. Examine yourself and Hold on to your miracle. Come this way. Keep coming to all number seven. Yes, come out, come out. Whatever the problem that God has taken away, come and let's hear your testimony. Keep coming, keep coming. Check them up and bring them out. Overseers, once you are ready, please want to have the first testimony the same way online you can submit your testimony online we will soon get to you all the location you get ready to keep coming this way on number seven please are we ready for our testimony keep checking up keep checking up the power have been released the power have been you are ready Okay, we want to hear some of the testimonies. And please, as you are listening to the testimony, begin to examine yourself because the power of being released, you cannot carry your problem home. Let's listen to the first testifier. Please tell us your name and what God did for you. The first testifier, please. The first testifier, our overseer priest, let's bring the first testifier. And keep checking yourself. Because the miracle power of God has been released. And you will never go back the same. Tell us your name and what God did for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Eke ne dirichi neke. Makaki ha jumbele mu. E shumi mo bodo wo na nata. Kanji nata ne nugu biya tukuno. Obzubwa ne tukuno iya mo duko iye nukiru madaya. Mu ya Jesus. Ozubon ya Jesus, so chwa takimu nano. 
ihe ada na akwa muna ya na amakwa mi ha ma nchi na eke na agwokwa ma site ke mbe a ha chi na eke na agwokwa ma ezi oku ezi oku na jesus christ o ye wai amen ever mbu da ye na oji how long was the problem how long when did it start and what happened Praise the Lord. She said that her name is Dina Oji. She came back from a journey to the village four years back and she was struck with stroke and also which affected the sight. But tonight, after the prayer of the man of God, she rose up and started walking, and also the sight had been restored. Jam your hand together for Jesus. Let's have the next person, please. The next testifier. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited. I feel like crying out for joy. Praise the Lord! My name is Obuna Mercy. I'm from Nkan region, DLCF Esut. It all started in January when I resumed school. I noticed that I couldn't breathe well and uh, I had this pain at the left side of my stomach. I couldn't eat everything because anytime I eat something that my system does not accept, I end up it ends up paining my stomach. So I, I came here yesterday after the rain fell. The cold was so much on me. Before then, I went to the hospital. That said, they said it was anxiety disorder, gastritis, and so many other things. Although I rejected it, I called my pastor. My pastor prayed for me. Since then, I've, I still have this, this feeling of pain and all that. Sometimes I end up collapsing. My head is so heavy, my knees feeble. I can't walk. I walk small and my head is heavy, my knees feeble. I begin to shake. And this evening, yesterday when I came here, after the rain fell, I couldn't breathe properly. I'm, I couldn't even sleep yesterday night. I would close my eyes and I would open it because I was scared that I would just die from my sleep because I wasn't breathing well. Just this evening, I was complaining to somebody. I told her, I'm, I'm shivering. My, my chest is spinning me. I'm feeling this, this trouble in my stomach. And then she was encouraging me. This evening, when I was standing at hall, praying for others, trying to bring them out, the Lord touched me. The Lord touched me and he healed me. Praise the Lord! Put your hand together for Jesus. As you are listening to the testimony, be examining yourself. And as you discover your own miracle, please come to all seven. The next testifier from here, please, before we go to our online brethren. Praise the Lord. My name is Ngozni Namani. I came in here today with heavy load in my heart and heavy load on my shoulder here. Physically, practically, it was too painful for me on this shoulder. And it extended to this part of my body. For decades, I've been having high BP. So I was surprised this evening, deciding to come to this crusade. The thing came up. And I was a kind of afraid because I didn't come with my medication. But instantly, as he was praying, the whole thing vanished. Even the weight in my, my whole being vanished. The problems I have inside of me so many years, because of attacks, they all vanish, and there's no fear, there's hope. Praise the Lord. Jam your hand together for Jesus. Is that jamming your hand? 
Amen. Now we go to the online brethren while we're getting ready more testimony here. Come. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come, come, that's it. Come, come, that's it. Come, come, that's it. and has not been able to work since that time without the support of this uh, worker and she had been dwelling in serious pain for the past four years but today as the man of God prayed the power of God struck her and for the first time she got out of this worker and walked down by herself Amen. walking, 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 walking See her walking. See her walking for four years. For four years. For four years. And there you have it. Great things happening at the ministration of the great man of God. My miracle is here. What are you? Praise the Lord. You've got it in Jesus' name. I'm inviting you to give divine touch for Total Freedom Crusade starting on 26th until to 31st. And I'm telling you, it's power packed. The man of God, Pastor Dr. Dobwekui, is already in town. And I want to tell you if you come, the Lord will visit. There is a miracle with your name attached. This is not just a program, this will be an experience for you. And all the members of your family. Anywhere you are, standing, sitting, your miracle will catch up with you. And today, testimony in your mouth. And those online, I rejoice with you. Testimony will meet you right there. That clip you just watched is right now on Pastor W.F. Kumui's Facebook page. Listen to this. Someone somewhere is crying. Someone somewhere is dying. Why would you let them die? Send them this clip now. Help someone out of the dungeon of despair. Hear this alone. Spread it to your family and friends. Tell someone to tell someone. This way, everyone will be liberated. This crusade is ongoing till the 31st of August, and all must be set free. Divine touch for total freedom with an international gospel evangelist pastor dr w f kumi ministry alongside an international gospel artist dan moe let everyone be set free we now go back to testimonies from the online we have the following testimonies roland Eiva, based in italy gave his life to Jesus Christ and wrote, I am happy, there is peace. I have met Jesus as my personal savior. Also he wrote, I was diagnosed of subacute appendicitis last week, Tuesday, 17th of August precisely. I was in pain all through, but by the grace of God, after the prayers of the man of God, all the pains disappeared. And he wrote, I am now totally delivered. Appendicitis is gone. Also, 
from Nigeria, North East Nigeria, Adamawa State. The testimony says, I got my genuine salvation experience at the signs and wonders crusade. I was healed of a chest pain of three weeks. Today, I got a feeling that I have been delivered also from every power of pornography and masturbation. God bless daddy. I am happy. We now return to the state of us here. Amen. Now we want to continue with our testimony, please. The next testifier, please. The next person. I'm telling you, as you are listening to the testimony, be examining yourself because the power of God has been released and you are free. The next person, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. My name is David Celeste. I'm from Taraba State. I was having some pain in my chest and heart for two years. So after the man of God prayed for me, the pain is gone. Praise the Lord! Let's listen to another testifier, please. Praise the Lord. My name is Brother Obina Odo. By the grace of God, I'm saved. Last week, I wake up and uh, as I wake up from the sleep, I begin to have very severe pain in my neck. I don't know the cause, but I refuse to take drugs. And not only that, because of the nature of my work, body pains all over my body. But tonight, as the man of God was preaching, I'm having the pain. But immediately after the prayer, and he said, check up yourself, check up yourself. Before I know it, both the neck pain and the body pain, everything vanish away. Praise the living God. Put your hand together for Jesus. Amen. If you have testimony, please don't hide it. Let's hear it from you, please. Go to Hall 7 now. Have any testimony? What God has done for you? Rise up. Come to Hall number 7 because the power of God has been released. Keep checking yourself. Your testimony is there. Let's listen to another testifier. Praise the Lord. My name is Brother Onwe Fine. I am from Amagona in Kano region, Enugu State. I want to testify of what God did to me during the last uh, Signs and Wonders Crusade at Calabar. But I've been passing through a hair challenge for about 13 years, which I could not explain until last year, 2020, when the situation became worse, that I could not urinate freely, except with pens, and they spending up to seven, eight minutes before I could finish uh, urinating once. So I have to go to hospital. After the diagnosis, they told me that they discovered that I had post I say post from where? I don't know. They gave me medication. I came back. After taking that one, I went back again. They said the thing is still there. I say, God, I know you are my healer. But on the 21st of July, last uh, the, uh, when the Science and Wonders Crusade was to start on the 22nd, I woke up in the morning to go and urinate. I could not urinate again. I was passing through pens from my head to my toe. I said, God, I'm in your hand. Then, come tomorrow, being Thursday, the 22nd, the first day of the Science and Wonders Crusade, I told God, I need these signs and wonders. You must heal me of this problem. I don't know where this problem came from. So after the program that night, we went home, waking up Friday morning. 
nothing happened. I was to come to Enugu that day. I boarded the vehicle. So we're on the way. I feel like urinating. I, said, I started asking God, how will I do it? Because I know it's a battle. But I summoned up courage. I jumped out. I went to urinate. Lo and behold, the whole thing just as if a tap was opened. I urinated out a stone out of my manhood. You will understand. That's how God healed me. No pain. No staying long in urination again. No symptom again. As I'm standing here, I am standing perfectly okay. Praise the Lord. Put your hand together for Jesus and your miracle shall be permanent. Please, you have testimony. Check yourself. God has taught you. Come and give glory to God. You come over here. We are still taking testimony. Every test, you know, whatever God has done for you, come over here. But meanwhile, we take testimony from the online. Please, if we have them. Online, we have some testimonies. This one is coming all the way from Ikenadani. He says, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. I'm also thanking God for healing me tonight. I had ulcer and different kinds of sicknesses. But after the prayer of the man of God tonight, ulcer has gone away. And all sicknesses are also gone. Praise the Lord. Another testimony. This one is from Ghana. He says, my name is Nana Abena Obeng from Ghana. I'm watching this wonderful crusade all the way on YouTube. For some time now, my mom has been having chest pains, which led to difficulty in breathing. But after the ministration of our Father in the Lord tonight, every chest pain and difficulty in building also disappeared. Put Praise your hands together Lord. for Jesus. We have a live testimony now from Worry Delta State. Worry Delta State coming up live. State. Delta. Stinks. Delta. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I woke up strong. We now return to some other testimonies coming from online. This one particularly talks about complete freedom from sin. Many people on YouTube wrote, I am blessed tonight. I am free from sin. Somebody also wrote on YouTube and said, Tonight, I had lifted my mother up to God for his mercy. After the prayers of the man of God, I called my mother and I found out that she is completely free. Praise the Lord. And finally, before we return, AC Florence, also on YouTube, wrote, This is the best moment of my life because tonight I gave Jesus a chance in my heart and I now have peace. Praise the Lord. Put your hand together for Jesus. He the man. He the man. He the man. He the love He the man. He the man. Sing, sing, sing. He the man. Yeah. 
Amen. We take more testimony. Day. And as you are giving their testimony, you discover your miracle. Please come to front of all seven. So they will be given opportunity to share your testimony with us tonight. Let's listen to the next testifier. Praise the Lord. My name is Brother Achuku John. I so much thank God for his goodness in my life and my family. And by his grace of God, I'm safe. I stand before you to testify God's goodness. Uh, I'm coming from uh, Udi region. So it was last crusade, signs and wonder for the needy. I carried my family and we we're going for the program. And Okada double crossed us within a close range of which I apply break, but to no avail, I have to hit the man and we fell. In the falling, apart from other bruises that I got and my wife, uh, my first daughter, nothing happened to her. Apart from that, my, my two months old baby hit the head somewhere of which I don't know. And uh, we, we now uh, drove to the church. That's one of our members that came and take us to the church. When we get down to the church, uh, we reported the matter to uh, Aru'o, Pastor Sylvester Odemene. And uh, he prayed for us and sent us to Park Lane for a checkup. So we went there at Park Lane. Our GS has preached already in the program. So my pastor now connected us when Jesus wants to pray for miracle in the program. So my pastor connected us through phone. He said I should lay my hand on the head of that my little baby where she was having the problem. I lay my hand on and Jesus was praying. And after the prayer, my brethren, the swelling up diminished. Praise the Lord. And after the diminution of that swelling up, we went for the scan. And the result was that nothing happened to my baby. Praise the Lord. Our Lord is good. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please come to Hall 7. Those who have testimony, please direct her to Hall 7. We listen to the next testifier, please. Praise the Lord. Children of God, praise Master Jesus. My name is Sister Peace and your Machiko also. I'm here to stand to thank God for his mercy upon my life. I want to thank God first for the salvation of my soul. I want to thank him of how he delivered me of a serious attack from the kingdom of darkness. It happened that there's a, uh, I started uh, evangelism, particularly morning cry. And there's this particular place I do go to the morning cry in a T junction. So after morning cry on that very day, I went home and they sent back an attack. It came in form of insanity. I began, I started acting abnormal. I started talking to myself. This thing that happened to me is not something I will be able to stand here to begin to narrate all the stories. I was taken to the hospital. They, they were thinking on whether to put me in a psychiatric. Each time they just hear them say that I begin to rebuke. They even gave me sleeping tablets that I took and I point and said, God, if I'm serving a living God, why would I be drugging myself for me to be able to sleep? I just keep praying and my, my sister that was taking care of me, she was praying as well. For to the glory of God, during the, uh, the, the crusade at Abuja Divine Connection, it was there because once it come like this, what it, uh, the message is just, let me just see the face of our general superintendent. And it was when I saw his face through his message, there was a calmness in my brain. And brethren, I stand here to testify to the goodness of God that as I am now, I am whole and I'm perfect. Praise Master Jesus. Jam your hand together for Jesus. The problem of the brain, gone. And she's now 
so that you can hear you speak soundly. The next testifier, please. You have, just keep checking up. You describe your own miracle. Come to hall number seven. Please interview them and line them up. Please let them go straight to the testimony. The next person, please. Praise the Lord. Afambo. Afambo. Achime. Leticia. Asimobina good. Beba. Testimony. Arthritis. Nebumni Belea Nabo. Adima Ganguija without Oshisi. Osikanda Gaija. Since. All for three years now. That's the most severe part of the event to Kuleba. Where a chapel, Major Yanine, where is that open? Gitchet, Gitchet, you own with it. Came Malum, me what I go, testimony. Where check you own and where for a man with a gear? Amen. So, a general voice is here. Oh, the number they back. We are going to go to the back. Praise the Lord. Jam your hand together for Jesus. Amen. She had a try. She suffered arthritis for more than three years and cannot move without a walking stick. But after the prayer of the man of God tonight, he dropped the walking stick outside. And he walked down from outside to this place, and you can see her walking. You can see her walking. Jam your hand together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. My name is Brother John Madukosri. I'm from Alumini DC Church in Enugu Group. Ojiriva region. In the last crusade he had at Kanaba, on 25th of that crusade, I slept in the night. A personality was telling me that a new pancreas had been given to me. In 2008, I was diagnosed to be diabetic. And since then, I have been on the medication. But when I woke up in the morning, I discovered that I did not urinate as I used to urinate that night. And since then, I have been watching to know whether the sign of diabetes will continue, I have not been seeing it. So 13 years of diabetes was taken away from me in that sense of wonders to say. Put your not hand together that, for Jesus. Not only that, in 1990, I discovered that whenever I go to the toilet, the part of my annuals was becoming out. And I continued praying about it. So, I asked Dr. what it this? Is it pie? He said it is called anapronase. So I also witnessed that since after that 25th night, as I go to toilet, I have not been seeing that sign again. And totally, in 1995, I started having toothache. There are holes here and there in my tooth. Then, I have extracted some teeth out of my mouth. But whenever I'm eating, I will be having pain. But since after 
that signs and wonder to say, I can chew anything I like to chew. No more pain in my mouth. Praise the Lord. If God had located me in the remote village where I view this to say, I believe for you that are present here. God also will locate you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. What God has done for him, he will do for you. Look at it. 13 years diabetes taken away during the signs and wonders crusade. Since 1990 was having piled. 31 years after the prayer on 25th of July, he says, Since then, he had not seen it again. And also, toothache was taken away, and your problem has been taken away. Is that your amen? Let's listen to the last testimony here. But if you have testimony, please still join them. We still want to have your testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Okonkwa Marvelous Chidzebubi. I want to testify, by the grace of God, I'm born again. I want to testify concerning the goodness of God concerning my life. In fact, in this crusade, signs and wonders crusade, I've been going through thoughts, the negative thoughts that have been that I've been, I've been battling with. If I want to think positively, the thoughts will try to suppress the positive, the negative thoughts will try to suppress the, the positive thoughts in my mind. Like now, the thoughts will just arise. Your mother will die. I'll say, Satan, shut up. Another one, it will just be arising, just disturbing me. So it comes to a point whereby I've been praying over it. And so I've been giving prayer requests concerning my life. And I cannot sleep without taking drugs. So I usually go for checkup. By from 2013 to this year, I've been going for checkup. So in these signs and wonders to see. I decided in this, I mean, at this in August, I decided not to be taking those drugs again. So after everything, I discovered that all those thoughts and this negative aspect of not sleeping have all they have all gone away. Praise the Lord. Is that your crappy? God is not a man, neither the son of man. He will never change. Neither will he repay. 